liberal viewer present. So those of you who've watched my videos for a while have seen Bill O'Reilly's mouth get him into trouble before, like last year when O'Reilly said he wouldn't participate in a lynching party against Michelle Obama unless there was evidence of her having un-American opinions. Or earlier this year when O'Reilly made fun of 87-year-old journalist Helen Thomas by comparing her to a wicked witch. Or maybe worst of all, in my opinion, in 2007 when O'Reilly blamed a boy kidnapped and sexually abused at age 11 for not escaping from his kidnapper and claiming the boy's ordeal was, quote, a lot more fun than what he had under his own parents, unquote. Now, in each case, instead of just apologizing, O'Reilly used a variety of diversionary tactics, chief among them being mischaracterizing his own offensive statement and then attacking his critics for being offended by his mischaracterization. And that's just what O'Reilly did last week when Kansas Dr. George Tiller, who O'Reilly literally labeled a baby killer for years, was gunned down in a church in front of his wife and the rest of the congregation. O'Reilly's primary response was to deny his own record, complaining in a New York Post article syndicated nationwide that he's being silenced, and responding to complaints about his baby killer comments by writing, quote, Chief among the complaints was the doctor's nickname Tiller the Baby Killer. Some pro-lifers branded him that, and I reported it. <laughs> you can see O'Reilly sticking to that story, answering an email on his show in this clip. Mr. O'Reilly, how can you be sure that reciting Tiller the Baby Killer over and over again did not inflame the assassin? The doctor was involved in a criminal case. I reported what groups were calling him. I reported accurately. Huh. Now, O'Reilly did a lot more than just accurately reporting what other people were calling Dr. Tiller. As you can see, for example, when O'Reilly learned that Dr. Tiller had been acquitted of those criminal charges he mentioned, being found not guilty of failing to get a valid second opinion before performing procedures, which O'Reilly reported last March like this. Now, we have bad news to report that uh, Tiller, the baby killer out in Kansas, acquitted. Acquitted today of uh, murdering babies. I wasn't in a courtroom. I didn't sit on the jury. Uh, but there's got to be a special place in hell for this guy. Huh, so that's a little more than just reporting what other people call Dr. Tiller. And it's not an isolated incident. Again, in April, when President Obama nominated Kansas Governor Kathleen Sebelius to be Secretary of Health and Human Services, O'Reilly did more than report what others call Dr. Tiller, as you can see in this clip. Tomorrow, the Senate will debate whether Kansas Governor Kathleen Sebelius should be confirmed as a new Secretary of Health and Human Services. Check would like to point out. The governor recently vetoed a bill that placed restrictions on late-term abortions in Kansas. The bill was introduced because of the notorious Tiller the Baby Killer case, where Dr. George Tiller destroys fetuses for just about any reason right up until the birth date for $5,000. There's no question Ms. Sibelius is one of the most pro-abortion politicians in America. And again, in May, just days before Dr. Tiller was murdered, Bill O'Reilly was back with the Baby Killer label, going well beyond just reporting what others call Dr. Tiller, as you can see again in this clip. Why Barack Obama would be so, and I'm using this word, and it could be a wrong word, callous in the abortion realm. I mean, the guy puts Sibelius in as a health, and you, you can't get a more fanatically, and, and that woman is pro-abortion. She wants the babies done for. This is, she supported Tiller the baby killer out there. So enough with her. Hmm, that enough with her comment even sounded a little threatening, though, of course, as a believer in free speech, I would never actually hold O'Reilly legally responsible for Dr. Tiller's murder based on his baby killer comments, but as for his moral responsibility, well, I think it was former now President Patricia Ireland who was barely able to point out the moral outrageousness of O'Reilly's conduct to him at the end of one of O'Reilly's famous filibustering interviews in which he talks three quarters of the time, just as O'Reilly was trying to say goodbye here. Miss Ireland, we appreciate you coming on. You call on. him Dr. Killer and he was murdered. And, and I think that, that is just yeah. outrageous. And so do I. I agree 100% with you. It cannot happen in America. Thank you for appearing tonight. It did. <laughs> she nailed him. At least that's what I think. But I want to know what you think. Even if the free speech clause of the First Amendment protects Bill O'Reilly from any legal responsibility for the murder of Dr. George Tiller, doesn't he bear some moral responsibility for the death of this doctor he repeatedly labeled a baby killer for so many years? And on the general question of how O'Reilly reacts when his mouth gets him in trouble? In the age of widespread video recording and YouTube, can Bill O'Reilly really just continually mischaracterize his own offensive statements while still maintaining any credibility with anyone whatsoever? I YouTube, you decide.